Hi, I'm Amelia and welcome to Sew Amelia, my channel where I talk all about making a handmade wardrobe for me and my children. Welcome to this week's video where I share all of the things that I made in September. If you are new here, it's great to have you along and I hope you enjoy watching this week's video with all of the things that I've made. If you are a subscriber, thank you so, so much for subscribing. It means so much to know that you're here every week watching my sewing journey. This week I hit 2,000 subscribers, which is just amazing. So thank you so much to all of you for following along. If you haven't yet subscribed, it would be great if you would hit that subscribe button and click the notification bell so you'll be made aware of when I publish new vlogs. So let's get into the things that I made in September. So the first thing I'm going to share with you today is my Closet Core Fiore skirt. Now this is a beautiful simple skirt pattern but with just the loveliest details. It has three different views and I chose to make view B which is the asymmetric wrap skirt and I made it in this beautiful cotton poplin from Like So Amazing and I think it's called Wild Swimmers Cotton Poplin. It's just the most fun fabric. So there you are, you can see all the little ladies swimming around. And I just loved the colours of that, partly because um, this red is a colour that I really like, and also because I knew it would work with a lot in my wardrobe and would even probably transition quite well into my autumnal wardrobe. Now the Fury skirt has a great size range, it comes in sizes 0 to 20, and then the second size band is sizes 14 to 32. It's a pretty straightforward make with no zips, and only one buttonhole here. So I did sew on a rather large button because I wanted to make a feature of it. And then you can see it opens out into the wrap skirt. So there is another button here to attach it. It has a lovely asymmetric pocket detail, a really large pocket here, and it has quite a good crossover wrap. But I think because of the asymmetric line of the front wrap part coming down in this direction, I did find there was quite a bit of flapping open. I don't really want to attach a popper because I think that would affect the line of the skirt. So it's fine in the summer, I just tend to wear a pair of bike shorts underneath to make sure that if the wind does catch it, it's not inappropriate. <laughs> now I think when I've made wrap skirts before, I quite like them to be fitted at the waist and so that was the measurement that I was most concerned with when choosing my size for this skirt. So my waist fell into the size 10, my hips fell into the size 12 to 14 but there was a lot of ease in the finished measurements around the hips, so I wasn't too concerned about that. Now my waist is 30 inches, and the finished measurements for my waist in the size 10 would have been 30 and a half inches, I think. I just wanted to make sure it was really fitted around my waist, so there was no sort of moving about. Now, in retrospect, it's a wrap skirt, so I could tighten it up if I wanted to. But I did decide to go for a size 8, and actually I'm really pleased with the fit. So I think that was the right choice for this particular fabric. I would like to make another version, either the wrap skirt or view C, which is a button down skirt with two pockets, which I also really like the look of. And I'd quite like to make that in a corduroy fabric for the winter time. And I think in a slightly thicker fabric, I would probably size back up to that 10, just to give me a bit more wiggle room, and especially in the winter to be able to tuck in thicker jumpers. But for this version, I think the size 8 was fine. It was a really lovely sew. I really enjoy using closet core patterns. I find their instructions really good. They're clear, they are concise, but with just the right amount of detail. And I really like the way that they finish off seams and the insides of their garments so that you get a really clean finish. So that is my closet core Fiore skirt. I'm really pleased with it. And I have actually worn it quite a lot considering that the temperatures have cooled down a lot now. The next thing I made, was the Nina Lee Bakerloo dress and this is such a lovely dress. This is the third Bakerloo dress that I have made now. I just find this pattern to be such a lovely easy one to wear, to put on and feel quite put together in as well. I really love the collar detail and playing around with putting on different trims on the collar and so when I bought this fabric from Like So Amazing I knew that I wanted to turn it into an autumnal Bakerloo dress and that's just what I have done. So here is the finished dress. And this is actually the last thing I made this month. So it hasn't had a lot of wear yet, but I can see it being um, on constant rotation as we head into the cooler weather. So you can see the Bakerloo dress with the amazing statement collar here. And rather than make a ruffle out of the same fabric, I chose to use this lace that I bought at CNH Fabrics when I was visiting some relatives near Canterbury. And I think it just 
matches really well. It matches with the creamy colour in the fabric and I just think it makes the collar stand out a little more rather than using the same fabric. So the Bakerloo dress is a smock dress with a collar detail and rather large voluminous sleeves. It comes in sizes 6 to 20 and 16 to 28 in different cup sizes as well across those bands. Now in Nina Lee patterns I tend to fall into a size 10 bust, a size 12 across the waist and a size 14 across the hips. So my measurements are 36 inches, 30 inches across the waist and 42 inches in the hip. However, I have made Nina Lee patterns quite a lot and so I sort of know how to adjust the patterns to fit my particular measurements. In this Bakerloo dress, I did just make the straight size 10. Looking at the finished measurements, there is enough ease in the bust and the waist and the hips to make the size 10 fit quite well. However, this time I did choose to add an invisible zip up the back just to give me a little bit more wiggle room in terms of getting into the dress but I do really like the slightly more fitted look especially when a smock dress. I could have added ties but I just find that gives me a bit of bulk and I don't particularly like when I sit back and have the tie pressing into my back so I chose to make the size 10 and to just add the invisible zip. The other thing I did on this pattern is I found I didn't have quite enough fabric for the huge sleeves and actually I wasn't sure I wanted the huge sleeves on this pattern so rather than fiddle about with the pattern piece that came with the Bakerloo dress I actually used the Friday Pattern Company Davenport dress sleeve pattern. Now that's another relatively full sleeve it's got a small puff at the top and then you put elastic into the sleeve so you do get this little frill detail at the bottom but it just doesn't have quite the same amount of fullness as the Bakerloo dress sleeve which was what I wanted. I think other people have found this with the Davenport dress when they've made it that the sleeve tends to finish at bracelet length and I wanted to make sure that this sleeve finished on my wrist especially heading into the colder months so I did lengthen the Davenport dress sleeve by two inches and I'm really pleased that I did that because I'm much happier with where this sleeve finishes, finishes just on my wrist which I think will be perfect as we go into autumn. So yes they went in just fine, I gathered the top of the sleeve head just the same as I would have with the Bakerloo dress sleeve pattern piece, there was no problem fitting them in to the bodice, they went in beautifully and I'm really pleased with how that turned out. So yes I'm off for some very exciting drinks on Friday with some friends so I think this will be the dress that I wear to those drinks. I'm really really pleased with it, I do love the Bakerloo dress. Now if you watched my week in sewing you will have seen me working on the next garment that I'm going to show you. This was a garment that came together slowly and it wasn't without some pain in the process, however I am so pleased with the finished garment and it is my spring jumpsuit by So Love Patterns. Now this one I have worn so much already, I absolutely love the colour of this linen. It comes from Thread Quarters and it's the heavier weight of her Irish linen. Uh, I wanted the heavier weight just to really hold the shape of this jumpsuit. Now the spring jumpsuit is a v-necked jumpsuit with a curved waistband and then it finishes in this point at the top here where the bodice meets the waistband. It's gathered into the waistband here across the bust and it is a wide legged jumpsuit. You can make it either in the cropped length or in the full length and I did decide to crop the trousers as that is the length that I prefer. Now again with my bust waist and hip measurements I fell into a size C across the bust, a D across the waist and E across the hips. Now what I decided to do was I cut out the bodice part here in a size C and I just graded it out here towards the waist so that it met the waistband for the size D measurements. Then I cut out the waistband and the trousers in a size D. Looking at the finished measurements for those trousers I knew I would have plenty of ease across my hips and I didn't want the wide trousers to be too wide so I did make a size C for the bodice graded to a D for the rest of the jumpsuit and I'm really really pleased with the fit. It is a snug fitting jumpsuit, I like the fact that that gives the jumpsuit a slightly more dressy feel to it so I have worn this one out. Um, and then I have also dressed it down with trainers on the school run. So I have found it to be a really versatile piece in my wardrobe and I'm really enjoying wearing it. I'm hoping that as the colder weather hits I can layer this up with a long sleeved turtleneck, probably in black, underneath this and I think that will carry it through into the autumnal weather. The linen was really lovely to work with, I tried to handle it as little as possible to avoid fraying and stretching out but actually it it sewed up beautifully without too many problems. The one problem I had was really kind of of my own making and it was attaching the bodice here into this 
V. Now on the inside you can see I've chosen to line that bodice part here. I wanted to enclose as many of the seams as I possibly could. However, with the linen being slightly thicker, it was just quite hard to really get that to fit and sew neatly into that point. So in retrospect, I should have chosen the option which the jumpsuit pattern does provide to make this with just one waistband, so the front waistband piece, and to leave it unlined, as I think that would have just given me a slightly sharper point. As it turned out, in sewing this up, I did stretch out the fabric here slightly, so I did have to go back into the waistband and just tighten it all up a bit so that it does now sit flat against um, my chest. So I'm really glad I took the time to do that, as I then feel a lot happier wearing this when it doesn't gape. The back of the jumpsuit is finished with an invisible zip and, I, and a button at the top. Now I chose to use an elastic loop that I had already in my stash, but it's got this lovely keyhole detail at the back which is such a pretty finish. So the back is as lovely as the front, which I really like. So despite the difficulties I had sewing that up, it actually is one of my favourite patterns I've made so far, both in terms of the linen and the colour of the linen, so the fabric I used, and in terms of the pattern itself. I was a bit worried about the v-neck and that it might be a little bit too low for me, but actually it's fine. And when I'm doing the school run and things like that and I'm, I'm dressing it down a little bit, I do tend to wear a vest underneath, which works fine. And as I say in the autumn, I plan to wear longer layer underneath it anyway. So I will definitely be making another one of these and I actually have a fabric on the way to me now that I think I'm going to use to make a Christmassy version of this jumpsuit as I really, really love it. The last thing I made for myself this month was the Juniper Cardigan by Jennifer Lauren Handmade. And I made it in this beautiful post box red sweater knit from Minerva. Now unfortunately I cannot find this on their website anymore but it was called the Victoria Sweater Knit and if I can find it I'll link it in the box below. So the Juniper cardigan is a lovely vintage style cropped cardigan, or you can make it in a longer line cardigan. I chose to make the cropped version with the saddle shoulders and the buttons all the way down the front placket here. It comes in sizes 6 to 24, and again, I fit into the bust 10 to 12, and the waist size 12, and then the hips up if I was making the long line cardigan would be in the size 14. Now, in the pattern she suggests that you really try to fit the bust, um, and that there should be some negative ease in there. However, I wanted to make sure that it sat just nicely around my waist, so I went for a size 12, which was where my waist measurement sat. Now, the finished measurements for my bust were 36 and 1 8 inch, so that's 1 8 of an inch bigger. <laughs> so although that's not strictly speaking negative ease, I'm very happy with the fit across the bust, and that just means that it sits really nicely on my waist and will go really nicely over my dresses without being too tight. I'm always a bit nervous sewing a sweater knit, so actually I kept putting this pattern off for a long time. But I thought the Jennifer Lauren handmade instructions were excellent, they were really easy to follow, they were very detailed, and they really made sure that I could get this cardigan finished with a really lovely professional looking finish to it. So that was really, really great. The pattern pieces had lots of notches, so they fitted together really well. It was just a real joy to sew, so I will be making more of these as I really like the look of them, I like the style of them, and I think they'll go really well over my smock dresses in the winter time. I mostly sewed it on the machine and then just finished all the seams with the overlock just to make sure that the material doesn't fray and to help it to last as long as possible. I think the only slightly difficult part was putting in the buttonholes, however, they weren't actually too tricky and I'm really pleased with them. I chose to use some vintage mother of pearl buttons that I have that actually my mother passed on to me. So that's really special to know that I've got those on this cardigan. Now the next few makes are ones that I made for my daughter. So if you're not interested in children's clothing, I totally understand and I will see you in the next video. However, if you are interested in embroidery and children's clothing, please do keep watching as these are some of my favourite patterns I think I've ever made for her. The first dress I'm going to share is one I've been working on since May, and that is her birthday dress. Now, I made her the Children's Corner Lee dress pattern. It's a very simple yoke dress with Peter Pan collar and then optional piping and trims for the collar and sleeves. It has got puffed sleeves as well and a waist tie. And here it is here. So you can see it's got the Peter Pan collar and I chose to finish the collar with some piping, which I made from the same fabric, as I just thought that gave just a nice little subtle touch. 
There's also piping here where the yoke meets the smocking. And I also chose to put piping on the puff sleeves where they meet the sleeve band. Now the fabric is a beautiful Liberty Tana Lawn that I bought from Minerva and I've linked that in the description box below. And for this I actually tried out some new to me uh, flosh, DMC flosh, that I've not tried before and I bought that from Sarah's Classic Sewing in America as I just wanted to try that for my smocking. And I enjoyed using that, particularly for the bouillon roses. It was brilliant for those. It's a slightly finer thread to work with than the DMC cottons. I'll put a link to Sarah's YouTube channel below with all of the information about her flosh braids if you're interested in using them for your embroidery. They really were lovely to work with and I'm looking forward to using them again in future projects. So the Lee pattern comes in two size bands. There is the six month to three year old pattern and then there is the four year old to eight year old pattern and I just love the style of this it's a very simple style dress but it just looks beautiful on little girls I really enjoyed doing the smocking it did take a little while but I do like to make her one smocked dress every year on her birthday as part of sort of a special birthday tradition I decided to make her the size 3 dress and it's quite wide across her but because of the waist ties I can quite easily bring it in so that it's sort of tight, it's a bit more tight and fitted across her waist. And then hopefully you can see, but I made a very deep hem, so you can see it finishes here and there's plenty of fabric in that. So as she grows I can turn down the hem and obviously loosen the waist ties a little bit so that it should hopefully fit her um, next summer as well as through the winter. Lay it up with a pair of tights and a little cardigan. If you are interested in making this dress and are a bit sort of intimidated by smocking, don't be. I find smocking to be so mindful and relaxing actually. And I learned a lot by watching both uh, Gail Doan's smocking videos, which I've linked before and I'll put them in the description box. But also Children's Corner themselves have some excellent videos on how to get started doing heirloom sewing and smocking um, on their website. So those are really good places to start as well if you're interested in sewing garments like this. The next two dresses are both the same pattern. They are the Peony Patterns Wattle Dresses. Now the first one is from a beautiful little ballerina fabric from Felicity Fabrics and when I saw this one I knew I had to buy it for my daughter. She does a little dance class once a week and she just loves it and so when I saw the ballerinas I thought I've got to make that for her. Now the wattle dress is a simple dress with just a little bodice and you can make it with either capped sleeves, three quarter length sleeves or full length sleeves and it has a lovely twirly circle skirt. Now the bodice is fully lined which is a lovely finish and just makes it quite soft for them to wear. It does sew up really quickly especially when you've made quite a few um, and it's just such a staple in her wardrobe in the autumn and the winter. I think she wears this at least once or twice a week especially if she sees it hanging in her wardrobe she always asks for the ballet dress. So this is the second version that I made and this is the wattle dress again and this is in a beautiful fabric called Rustic Rainbows from Amy Elizabeth Fabrics and it's such a lovely quality cotton jersey. I absolutely love sewing with her fabrics and she has amazing designs for both boys and girls in her shop. So this one again is sewn up in a size 3. I made both in a size 3 even though she's just turned 2 because I think it gives her enough room for this season but also hopefully she'll be able to wear it into the next year as well. I love the puff on the sleeves, I think that's a really nice detail in this dress and I decided to make this one with the long sleeves as I think this one will go really nicely into winter with a pair of tights underneath. Now the other thing I love about peony patterns is that they have a really wide size range. So that particular dress comes in sizes 1 to 14. So I can be making that for her for a very long time, which I think I probably will do because it's just such a lovely, easy to wear staple dress um, in a child's wardrobe. The next thing I made for her was also a peony patterns dress. This was my first dress that I made um, as a Minerva brand ambassador. So I was gifted this fabric in return for a review and if you want to read that it is over on my profile on the Minerva website and I'll leave the link below. So this is a beautiful art gallery cotton poplin and it's from their playroom collection and it's called As Easy As ABC. <laughs> It really was easy to sew up as well. It was such a lovely stable fabric to work with. Now when I got it I thought the pattern was so much fun that I had to sort of make the most of it. So what I decided to do was to embroider these letters on the front of the bodice. Now I love the posy pattern because I really enjoy making a feature of these delicious pockets. Now they're so deep 
and it's so much fun watching her at the park playing and filling up these pockets with all sorts of treasures. This is one of the first dresses she's had with pockets and she really loves to wear it because she just is so delighted that she has pockets to fill. <laughs> So what I did with this one is I went into my local fabric shop and found two fabrics that I knew would work really well for the pockets and matched the colours in the fabric. And then I used some piping cord that I had and made piping. And I really love the finish that that gives. It really brings out the pinks and the blues in the pattern and it makes it a lot of fun for her to wear. And again, I think this is quite a summery dress but I can definitely layer up with a nice warm vest underneath and with tights for the winter. Again with peony patterns it comes in a size 1 to 14 which is brilliant and it was a pretty quick and easy make. It has a lovely lined bodice but this pattern suggested that you finished off the bodice by simply overlocking it to the skirt. Now I don't prefer to do that as I don't like the overlocking to press right up against her skin. I don't think that's particularly comfortable for little people. So what I chose to do instead was to simply fold up the bodice lining and then to hand sew it down to the skirt so that that seam was enclosed in the bodice rather than just left raw and overlocked. So I really like the neat finish that that gives and I just think it's much more comfortable for her. So that's the only thing I changed on that pattern. I finished up on the back using snaps just to keep it really easy for her to get in and out of uh, and that's another great little play dress for her for the autumn and the winter. The last garment I made in September was again for my daughter. Now I was gifted this pattern in return for a review and it is the Ruby Bubble by Blue Ribbon Heirloom Designs. Now I absolutely love this pattern. It was such a joy to sew. There were some techniques in here that I hadn't uh, done before. So I've never sort of made a yoke like this with the trim across the top and then across the back um, there is elastic to finish it off with and then buttons to for the straps and then the crotch has this lovely finish here where you add the crotch band and the poppers so it, it just was so much fun to sew and the way that it all came together was just lovely so I can definitely recommend this pattern the pattern comes as a PDF and you can print that at home because there are actually only a few sheets of paper for this pattern which is really good. And Gina has made the most wonderful videos to talk you through every step of the process so in case there's a bit of confusion about which bits go where there are really helpful video tutorials to walk you through each step. Um, but the pattern instructions are well written, they're very clear and it was a really quick and satisfying sew. Now the pattern has this beautiful yoke detail across the front and what I knew I wanted to do with that was sew it up in a contrasting fabric. So the main fabric I bought from Like Sew Amazing and I just love it. It's got a beautiful little floral print on it and then I just tried to match this fabric with the colour of the flowers here. And then what I did for her was I embroidered her initial on the front here using a little Lizard King pattern. Now it's the Victoria embroidery pattern and it comes with lots of variations. So there are these little letters here with the three flowers and then there are bigger letters as well and then the largest sizes for older girls. So I'll definitely be using I think that pattern again because the embroidery just was very easy, great instructions in that uh, embroidery pattern and I just love the little pop of colour that is on the front of that pattern. So yes she's had a lot of fun running around in the park with that this week, feeding the ducks and just playing on the slide and the swings in her little bubble. It's really really such a sweet pattern and I think I'll definitely be making some more of these in the summer next year. So quite a few garments this month, quite a few garments for my daughter. I think I'll be making some for my sons next month. But thank you so much if you've made it to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed all those different garments. Do let me know below which one was your favourite. It's always nice to hear from you which ones you like and perhaps if you've sewn any of them before let me know what you think of the patterns. I've been so enjoying getting into some autumn sewing and I'm really looking forward to sewing up some more autumnal makes in October so do come back next week and see what my plans are for my October sewing. In the meantime, I hope you have a great week and get lots of sewing done. Stay happy and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye bye!